Titanic speaking and welcome to another Touch Designer tutorial. This time we will have a look at how to create a watercolor painting out of any image you put into this setup. So it works with this hand or it's pretty cool with landscapes too. And we will have a look at how to create this kind of blurred out version which looks like you used more water in your watercolor and then I have this more detailed version and I also have a version where you have a little bit of structure and it's more like a gouache or oil painting maybe I'm not that familiar with the colors but I feel like it looks like you used a color with structure so um, yeah, uh, as always, we start from scratch and I will see you on my screen. There we go. <laughs> and I already loaded in my image and set it to my resolution and connected it to the background so we can see what's going on. So um, the first thing we need to do is bring some more structure into this image and we do so by adding some grain. So what we will do is insert a comp after our fit and out of that fit we head into a noise and we change the noise type from simplex 3D to random GPU. So um, you can see this just creates a random kind of grain using our color coordinates. So when we connect this to our comp, we get some, some grain on here. Um, and right now I'm going to keep all those parameters on default. We might make some changes later. So then I will add a null after this comp, since we are heading into a feedback loop now. And I will create a composite here. So um, this composite will have the operation mode maximum. And then out of the null, let's put our feedback in. Connect this to the comp make this one the target layer and when we play we see nothing and this is completely fine since we will insert some stuff now and since we're using a still image there's nothing going on so now let's bring in some some movement and we do that by adding a displace after our feedback and let's change the displace weight to 0.991 for now. And now let's take care of the map we are going to use to displace. So um, out of that feedback, I will create a, a noise and change the output to noise. So we just take the resolution of this feedback into our noise here and also I will animate that noise so we'll type apps time dot seconds and I'm going to multiply it with 0.01 so it's it has movement but it's barely there <laughs> So just really, really slightly. And then I will copy that noise, since we will need two noises, which we will combine to this piece. So um, let's have a look at the parameters of our first noise. So I want a lot of detail. So I will bring up the harmonics to 10 and in our second noise. I will bring the harmonics to 10 too 
And in the second noise, I'm changing the seed to something else. So we don't have the same noise twice. And then, out of the first noise, we head into a reorder. And our second noise will be the second input of the reorder. And since our displacement only uses red and blue, we don't need any green input. So the output of the green will be set to zero. And then we want to bring in the second noise we have here. Right now we are only using the first noise because we only have input one here. So for our blue input, which will be the vertical source for the displacement, we will change to input two. So now we combine those two noises in one map, which we can use to displace. So let's bring this in here. And now we can already see some effect going on. And right now our displacement is kind of cool, but I want it to be even more detailed and have more of this watercolor feeling. And to get even more details, we will copy each of these noises and let's give us some space here. And we will use, so for this noise, we'll go into the second input of this noise. So you can see it creates a, a noise out of this noise. <laughs> and the same thing we will do with our second noise. Just use this and plug it in here. And then we will change this to our first input, and this one to our second input. And now you can already see we have more detail going on. So when we pulse our feedback, it gives us this really fine details, which is basically already a watercolor feed. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been joking. <laughs> um, I won't cut it out. Uh, you just have to live with this weird noise. Uh, you might know I love noise. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And now I want to blur those edges a little bit more. So it's, it's like the one I showed in the beginning. So we have this more water in our watercolor. And actually what I'm going to do too is insert a keyboard in chop so we can reset our feedback using our key one so we can start that over and over again since it's so cool um okay um you might hear that my pc is going a little bit gray crazy i don't know why exactly but So let's continue and let's bring in some more blur and we will do that by bringing in a blur. <laughs> okay, so now you can see we get those more blurred out edges which are really cool but a little bit too heavy so I bring this down to 2. So it's really just slightly, since now we will insert another displace to give us even more details and more fading out. So bring in a displace. And once again, we set this displace to a really low parameter, so 0.0091 is fine. And then we give us some, some space here and then out of this displace we head into a comp and we will use our null here as the second input for the comp set the operation mode to soft light and then head into a slope and change this to strength 5 and step sample step five five and then let's plug this one in here 
and now we have more a little bit of more details and evolution in our displacement so it's kind of if we set this to a higher higher number you can see it a little bit better so we get more evolution and those colors mix into each other pretty well when you insert that second display so it adds some really nice details and fluffiness to our watercolor so okay and now let's have a look at how to insert a little bit of structure in here so we have those oil painting feelings <laughs> so this is actually pretty easy uh, I will insert a composite and out of this I will add into a emboss change the strength to 12 so really high and then go up with the midpoint and just plug it into our composite and there we go so um, now you can play with that midpoint until you like it also the direction of your structure out of which way you want the light to come so this is kind of cool to give the whole thing a little bit of 3d feeling so it's more analog and yeah okay one thing i forgot is the thing where we add even more water so i will just use my more blurry version again and then i will insert into the feedback loop another blur but this time not just a blur but a luma blur instead <laughs> and the second input which will define where to blur that image will be a noise heading out of that displace so create a noise change the output to noise use this one as a second input too and plug it in here now and then turn up the black filter width and then you can already see wherever it's black here we blur that image here so if I set this really high you can see we blur nearly everything <laughs> but if we work with a pretty low number we get some nice blurred out areas and some are not blurred out so it's more of this random irregular feeling you have with watercolor and to have a little bit of more of control you could change the exponent to null so you have this kind of thresholded image where you can play with the seed to have a better look and sharper edges which can define this a little bit better so um, yeah basically that's it about the technique I wanted to show um, it's pretty cool with every um, image I didn't find any image which didn't work <laughs> and um, also it's pretty cool with movies or abstract shapes and yeah uh, I hope you can use this in the future and I hope you liked it I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully hear you next time Stay kind. And bye-bye.